Hello everybody! In today's video, we'll be reviewing the Morgri RKB68 keyboard. It's a low-profile mechanical keyboard, and it uses Kale's low-profile chalk switches. If you're not familiar with low-profile switches, they're basically the mechanical switches we all love and know, but really flat. Normal keycaps won't fit on these switches, and basically all of this is to achieve a flat keyboard that's still mechanical. So say bye-bye to scissor switch laptop keyboards and membrane keyboards if you're looking for something flat. The keyboard currently only offers kale, chalk, red, white, and brown switches. The keyboard is also wireless and it uses Bluetooth. It can connect up to three devices at a time, and it is compatible with Windows and Mac OS, which is great for Mac users. It has this really cute white and blue color scheme. I think that's the only color they're offering right now though. There's no other colors, only blue and white. Also, the keyboard layout is 65%, hence down the best layout and you cannot change my mind. The keycaps are PBT material and they feel really good. They also have these rounded indents on them which makes it feel more natural for me to type with. Inside the box, they give you a USB Type-C cable, the manual, and a warranty card. As far as I know, there's no software or drivers for this keyboard. There's a pink button on the top of the keyboard to turn on Bluetooth mode, and the other three buttons is for choosing which of the three devices that you can connect to this keyboard. I find it a little weird that the USB port is on the right side of the keyboard, since most keyboards put it on the left or in the center, and it makes my setup look a little strange because of how the cable is. I kinda wish they sent me kale chalk grid switches instead of white, because I was going to mod the keyboard, but now I don't think I will because of the switch choice. I hear a bit of rattle on the spacebar, but that's to be expected from stock keyboards. The back of the keyboard is really plain. I can't read what the text on the label is, but I don't really care. There's no flip-up feet at the back, but they have these rubber lines lining the edges to stop the keyboard from sliding around and to give the keyboard its angle. To be honest, I wish there were flip-up feet because the keyboard can feel too flat for typing, but it's not that bad since there's some angle, but I wish it was just a little bit higher. The keyboard's case is made of aluminium, and it has this gloss coating around it, which is a fingerprint magnet, but the keyboard is crazy sturdy and made of some really good material. There's virtually no flex at all because it's metal dude. You can switch between using the Windows mode or the Mac mode by pressing the FNZ or FNX key. You can access any other function keys that are printed on the keycaps by holding on the FN and the key that you want to press. I like it when keyboards print what the function keys are because those that don't can be quite infuriating. The typing experience on the keyboard is surprisingly pleasant. The round edges help me not accidentally press the wrong key, and transitioning to this keyboard was really easy. I remember I had issues moving from my Happy Hacking keyboard to the SteelSeries Apex Pro because of the keycaps, and just everything felt different. But not for this. Generally, I'd say this is a pretty solid option for typists out there looking for a nice flat keyboard with a cute colour scheme and isn't gamerish looking, since there's no LEDs. The sound profile of the keyboard is pretty decent as well. The part I like the most about the keyboard is the case. Not every day you see a keyboard with a full aluminum case like this. And now let's talk about the price. This keyboard sits at 145 USD. That's pretty damn pricey for a keyboard, but it's a good option for Mac users out there. I know keyboards like the N Pro 2 and the Keychron are popular because of their Bluetooth modes and Mac compatibility. However, this keyboard is still pricier than either of those keyboards. But it's also worth noting that those keyboards don't have low profile switches or a full aluminum case. This keyboard should sound better than them with extra modding because of the case material. But I can't really tell how good this keyboard sounds because the one they sent me uses clicky white switches. It'll be easier to tell how the keyboard sounds if they sent me something linear. Although the white switches do feel pretty good. They feel lighter than blues and they're smooth, I guess? In the end, I recommend this keyboard for typists looking for something light and easy to type with and need the Bluetooth functions or Mac compatibility. As for gaming, it's alright I guess. I tested the keyboard on different BPMs on Osu and Eterna, but I have no idea what the polling rate of this keyboard is. One thing I do know is that the chord splitting is like this and that's pretty bad. The scan rate tester website says that the keyboard is 250Hz, but I generally don't trust this website because it says the Happy Hacking keyboard is 33Hz when it's actually 125Hz. So I genuinely have no idea what the polling rate of this keyboard is because I think the polling rate is variable, it's unstable. But yeah, that's it for the video and thanks for watching. If you're interested in this keyboard, please go check them out and here is a sound test.